Hey everybody, it's Paul from Screen 90 Mentor. Today we're going to look at Studio Vidi. Now, the creators of Studio Vidi reached out to me and would like to, and wanted to know if I could do a couple videos for them. So I'm going to do a video for them on my initial impressions and probably a review video as well too. Just so you know, I'm not getting any money for making the videos. What will happen is they gave me a code, so if you're interested in purchasing the software, they do have a free version, which we'll see shortly here. If you would like to purchase the software though, I can save you some money on that. So let's dive in, take a look at Studio Vidi, see if it's something that would be useful for you as a creator, uh, and see what goes. All right, so I'm at the uh, web address for Studio Vidi right now. So the interesting thing about Studio Vidi, think of it as a studio binder or Celtix. They have a screenwriting product, so a screenwriting editor that you can use, as well as all the production management uh, software you need as well too. So let's just take a look at, we're looking at their homepage right now. We'll go through real quickly, um, empowering the community. Uh, we can see it's for screenplay writing. Uh, it's a leading editor for screen screenplay writing with index cards and a beat board. So that'll be interesting. We'll take a look at that pretty soon. Uh, you can create a shot, shot list. Uh, you can do a breakdown. Uh, you can work with people securely, a task manager, call sheet, production calendar. All stuff that uh, fits right in if you've ever used Studio Binder before. And I see this as we're, as we're beginning to go through the different parts of Studio Vidity is that I'm noticing that if you're a small creator, this will probably work pretty well for you. If you're sort of a one man or woman, woman show, uh, or if you have a very small production team, this looks like it'll work pretty well. It's an alternative to using something, some of the production problem programs that you would use with uh, stuff like Final Draft. So let's take a look. Again, you can start for free and uh, you'll be able to look at, you have unlimited documents, comments, index cards, beat board, tag notes. And one of the big features that I really loved about this is the 350 plus languages. I know a lot of people as they're looking at uh, screenwriting software, they can't find the language that they want. So I think it's, I think it's really neat that they have 350 languages. So with this language feature, if someone who's other than an English speaker could look at these and let me know what they think of the language, uh, put it down in the comment section below. You have a breakdown of a shooting script, uh, cinematography shot list. Again, you can type in what the shot you want, shot type, movement, equipment, lens. So again, for folks that are using this as sort of your one-stop shop, this looks like it's pretty easy to use and pretty invaluable. So we have a crew call sheet. Again, the nice thing that you're noticing with this feature as well too, is you're noticing that you can do it on laptop, mobile, and like an iPad. Hence, that's also mobile too. Uh, so some interesting things with the call sheets, you can sync with scripts, create a storyboard. Uh, you have 30 plus elements plus PDF download. You can add notes and cam setup and you have multiple views. So you can sort of see from the call uh, sheet title. You can see all this different things uh, here on their graphic. Timeline production. So this is the hard part of filmmaking that a lot of times that I know for me as a, as a writer doesn't always appreciate as well, but you have stuff to do. You have a production calendar. When are you going to do shooting? When are you going to have the actors on stage? When are you going to do post-production? When are you going to look at all the script stuff? Uh, you need to have a timeline and this again allow uh, for especially those small production uh, groups of people or companies this is probably an invaluable sort of asset for them to look at that have a task manager who does what that's another thing on a on a script who is doing what and you can sort of see what they are looking that they need to do uh, so you can see that they've had some awards and recognitions and you can explore and read community stories. So we're gonna take a look into all these different things here. So, so you're probably wondering, let's take a look at their pricing model. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at pricing really quickly here. As you can see, it's fair pricing, no surprises. Uh, free for use as long as you want, it's no credit card required, you can get started for free. As you can see, it starts basically at $2 a month for just the screenwriting portion. And again, you can see the features with screenwriting. And then it also starts with the production side for $15 a month. 
Uh, now, the notice I liked on there, it says collaborators can only see projects they're invited to and cannot create projects. Teammates can see all projects in your account and create new projects and learn about sharing. Uh, let's take a look, and since it says it starts at $2 a month, we're gonna take a look at um, their pricing a little bit more in detail uh, because you can add people to the account and we'll see how much that changes. If you're looking just for a, sort of a cost comparison before we dive into that, Studio Binder, it's um, the the uh, the uh, tier that it wants uh, it recommends for you to buy is forty nine dollars a month. The cheapest tier on Studio Binder is twenty nine dollars a month, and that's an individual. So just keep that in mind as you're looking at this that it is a considerably cheaper version of Studio Binder. Uh, just so you know that. So if you're looking for a lot of the same tools in Studio Binder, um, and all the stuff that they offer offer in the the production part of the app would be going for $49 versus $29. So it's it's probably a better, so it's it's a little less than half. And again, if you use my code today, you'll actually save even more. So let's try screenwriting. Let's see, projects, 10 team members, one, enter coupon code, currency, uh, what's the annual amount? So the annual amount looks like it's 20. So if I have 10 projects that I could, it would pay only, it would be $22, $22.50 or monthly I'm paying $2. That's pretty cool. So it's really looks like it's fairly inexpensive. Let's do a hundred projects and see how much. So if I have a hundred projects, it's only going to cost me twenty dollars for a year. Actually, one hundred and eighty-four dollars, or twenty bucks a month. So, but like I said, if I only have like a couple projects, if I'm only doing ten projects, it's two dollars. It's pretty inexpensive. All right, let's go back and take a look about how much it would cost to do the production side of it. So they have again ten projects. Uh, Fifteen dollars a month annually, one hundred eighty-nine dollars. So it's really pretty inexpensive. Like I said, if you have a lot of, you're, if you're doing eighty or ninety projects, you know, that's you're getting in, and you have one team member. Let's go back and just see if you have ten projects. But let's say we have five team members. How much more that increases the cost and stuff like that. So if we have five team members, it's $39. Okay, perfect. And so you can also, if you use, if once you use my code too, that'll actually bring it down another 30% as well too. So it doesn't look like it's that expensive. Let's take a look. So a lot of times, let's look through the screenwriting part as well. So if we have two writers, well, for four writers, or five writers, if you have five teammates, if you have five people that are writing with you, Cost you four bucks a month. So annually 40 bucks. That's pretty cool. So, and you, what you need to do is you need to buy both to, to uh, be able to use both sides of the program. Well, it's fairly, really inexpensive. 40 bucks, that's really inexpensive. Let's look at that one more time because if you're doing 10 projects for screenwriting, that's okay, it's two bucks. So annually you're paying 22.50. And so, and like I said, if you use my code, it's even going to be cheaper than that. But that's how many, so that's like five years worth of using Final Draft. I mean, it's, so this could be pretty good. So let's take a look at the value to see if it's worth the money it's asking for. So we'll take a look at test projects. So let's complete a document. So let's add a new document. So uh, what I'm doing basically is... We're just going to add a new document. So we're going to do test one, two, three, document type. Uh, it's going to be a screenplay. So here we go. All right. So we can take a look at our screenplay. Hey, okay, let's take a look at the widgets on the side here. This looks like a home. So obviously home. Here's our document. Here's our shooting script. We have elements. Let's click on that and see what happens. We have extras, props, settings, location, makeup, costume. So a lot of this elements are going to be for when you do the shooting part. So for screenwriting, I wouldn't really worry about that. Shot list, 
call sheets, task manager, production calendar, and chat. Let's go back to document to test to this. Okay, so let's see what we what this all looks like right now. So as I just came into the screen, this is what you can start with a scene, an action, a character, a parenthetical dialogue, a transition, or general. And you see you have them all up here as long as with their shortcuts. We have index card, we have a beat board, we have notes, we have the save function. You can also write comments next to each thing, which is I think is pretty cool. Also help with support line. Perfect. Let's see if I can load in a previous import. I can load a PDF, fountain, or text. So let's take a look and see what happens after I input a PDF that I have. Okay, so I took a PDF from Fade In. And then granted, this was just the free version. And as I logged it in here, it had uh, telling me this was the free version of Fade In that I was using. But as I'm looking at how things look, it doesn't look like it's really in screenwriting format. And and I don't know if this is due to just because it was a free version of the PDF. Um, and so that's what's come about with it. So I'm going to take a different file and see how it looks with something different. So I'm uploading my completed AI script from Final Draft, which I paid for. And I'm noticing that some areas of the script look pretty good. Other areas don't look so well. I don't know if I can... It looks everything looks a little too much too scrunched and here we have I think the hard part here is it so that it has more here because on my final draft PDF it was going to a different page and so and you can also see it's also not for, following correct character formatting or just formatting in general so it looks like if I input something into this that it's not coming over in a way that's easily rec recognizable. I think I have to go through and then I have to go through and change everything because because look here I, as I go through this you know if I just I'm taking each of these different parts here you know, but like I said it's, it's looking as, I, as I'm going through this it doesn't look like Studio Vidity is really good at taking a previous format from a PDF and turning it into the same format that you need for screenwriting and it takes that this same format and when you print it as a pdf through studio vidity it doesn't have the right format so i was thinking well maybe it doesn't have the right format here but when it produces its own pdf it'll have the right format and it does not so just so you are aware of that let's take a look at some of the other functions right now we can take a look at the index cards and so if we want to move around different pieces here let's take a look and take the you can view the scene here and what if we would drag it to rearrange it so that I start with with this it oh it does it rolls it back into on our page it pulls it into the correct position so that's good to know uh, so that's interesting with the index card function and you can see you can delete your scene and stuff like that so perfect so that functionality works pretty well so you have your beat board Let's do a three-act structure. So if we edit that, uh, so I can't look at the beat board for this. So let's go back to our edit. And it tells me the number of words. I can put comments to each of the sections. So that looks pretty interesting. All right, so let's take a look at starting another project from scratch to see how easy it is to create a document see how it holds with doing uh, screenwriting in general so let's take a look at a new document so let's go to add go to document all right this is what I've noticed a little bit too about this particular product is sometimes it doesn't want to do stuff for me it sort of hangs for me so let's do writing sample create hmm well, let's create a new project. Let's create another add new 
screenplay is try writing sample two document type screenplay all right so we'll try this one this one will just go through and do a scene we'll just create something up interior house day and then we'll just uh, I'll speed this up a little bit as I create something. Okay, so I just wrote a little scene right here. Some things to I've noticed as I've written this before is as I'm writing this, it doesn't have automatic refill. So it doesn't automatically, so as I go to type in Craig as the person who is talking, it doesn't automatically autofill his name. Uh, I don't know if that's an option that we can turn on or anything like that. It looks otherwise like everything else is working just fine. Uh, let's see if I can use a beat board with this. Let's do a three act structure. Uh, it doesn't look like I'm authorized to use a beat board. So overall, I think this is a bare basic screenwriting editor. I think it's a little bit more savvy than Studio Binder is. I haven't tried Celt Celtic yet, so I can't talk about that. But the claim to fame for this is not the screenwriting portion. The claim to fame for this is gonna be all this other stuff that you can put in here from your shooting script um, to your elements, your shot lists, your call sheets, your task manager. That's where this really earns its dime. And to be honest, it's really pretty cheap for a screenwriting software. It costs, uh, like I said, when I initially looked at the cost, it was fairly inexpensive, a couple of dollars a month. I think the hard part of this, the part that uh, I have some trepidation about is it doesn't import PDFs very well from other screenwriting software programs. So you're probably gonna have to rewrite it. Or if you do bring a PDF into it, it's not gonna be, uh, you're gonna have to do some adjustments to it uh, to say the least. You're gonna have to look at all your formatting. So it might just be better if you just write your particular screenplay in this particular software. I mean, the nice thing about it is that it works on all different types of devices. It syncs really well between uh, PDF, I mean, between uh, mobile and desktop. I think overall, the product is okay. I mean, if you're looking for something that's a little cheaper than Studio Binder and Celtic, give this one a look-see, give it a test, give it a test. Uh, you can use the free versions to see if it's something that you want to invest some money in. Well, to the next video, write well and live well.